My name is Gisela Cologne. I'm an artist and I live and work in Los Angeles. My work consists of light activated sculptures that I create with innovative materials of the 21st century, aerospace carbon fiber, optical acrylics, and materials that work on refracting the light, creating of a prismatic color spectrum. I've self-titled my practice Organic Minimalism because it refers to forms that are really pared down and simple, but yet the organic quality that I infuse into them feels like they're lifelike and they have a glow and a transcendence inside them that really refers to the organic world around us. So I paired those two words to explain my practice to myself and to the world. My practice expands and deconstructs what is traditionally white male dominated practice of minimalism emanating from the 1960s. There were very few women that were engaged in this type of art. And I think that my practice adds a new dimension. I gravitated to minimalism conceptually because it is the most democratic form of art. It doesn't tell the individual what to think. It doesn't contain a specific narrative. So what it provides the audience with is a pure experience. It's a phenomenological way of looking at the world. It gives you a vibrant perceptual experience, which you mediate through the interactiveness of the works. Organic minimalism as a concept is embodiment of change, transformation, and a lot of the inspiration that I draw from is the physical laws of the universe, such as energy, gravity, movement, time, light, and space. And I bring that into the work to allow the viewer to feel that. I start with a very age-old way of creating art, which is just drawing. So I take a paper and a fluid pen, and I start drawing forms, one drawing composed of one line and that line becomes the perfect form. From that fluid drawing that emanates from one line that gets transferred onto wooden strata that then gets formed into these tools or molds. And then those tools or molds are then utilized to shape the various optical acrylics and ultimately form the sculpture. And the sculpture is composed of multiple internal layers. There is no paint inside. It is just pure prismatic effects of the layers capturing the environmental light and fragmenting it into what I call my fluid color spectrum. So as the viewer moves around the object, you'll see a change in form and color. It moves with you. Each layer that I add to the sculpture then changes the end result of the color. So it's really a fun process to see it grow, literally, and then be able to look at it and determine the effect that each layer has. So I would say it's a really organic process where I'm determining the outcome as I go. I'm always trying to find new materials to make art with. And so that's the beauty of the materials that I use, that they're things that are not normally utilized for art. And so that's really where I get a lot of my enjoyment from. Conceptually, that's where the monoliths emerged from the wall work. First, I had the wall works and I had the form embedded inside the form or what I call the nucleus. And some people see them as seeds or as wombs, referencing reproduction. But I kept on looking at it and thinking there's two aspects to this, the formal aspects of the art and then the real life aspect. And in the formal aspect, I kept on looking at it and saying, how can I further distill and reduce the minimal object to a singular form? And so that's where I got the idea of extracting the nucleus and bringing it onto the floor to create a perfect sculpture that has no lines, no corners, no demarcations, no 90 degree angles, no place to rest the eye, to create that beautiful singular form. The genesis of the monolith was extracted from the pods, and there's a real life aspect to it, which is just like a seed grows into a little sapling and then it becomes a tree. I metaphorically feel like my practice followed that same footprint of how life becomes. Things from seeds then grow into tall trees that stand on their own. Traditionally, in minimalism, the work was completely devoid of any content or reference to identities. 
Many of the women sculptors of the era of the 60s and 70s shied away from providing any sort of identification in their work, like Judy Chicago in the 60s, who basically said, look, I had to make work that looked like it was made by a man in order to be able to be accepted. I not only imbued the work with content in terms of not shying away from identity and the female aspects of the work, but also fluid gender spectrum to be able to say, I can appropriate masculine forms such as the phallus, bullets, projectiles, rockets, things that were traditionally really strong and referenced masculine energy and appropriate those forms to become feminized by virtue of this ethereal surface treatment that I give them and this mutating color shift that occurs like for example in the Andromeda monolith it really presents an incredible shift of color that really references this fluidity of surface that becomes almost feminized but at the same time its form is hyper masculine but I feel like I've been able to access any form of that gender spectrum and I embrace it. Being able to embody everything and fluidly move between these identities that I think is so necessary in today's world. The places I've lived have influenced my practice greatly because I access everything around me since I was little. So I grew up in Puerto Rico. It was a rich place of biodiversity visiting El Yunque rainforest, being on the beaches, in the jungle, having all kinds of flora and fauna all around me. I always go back to that primordial, primal essence that I experienced on the island. And then I overlay that with my experience in Los Angeles, which is an amazing metropolis brimming with movement, transformation, and freedom. Los Angeles represents a place where people look to in the world as to what is new and different. I feel that that is a big source of inspiration for my work. My name is Janelle Hazard, and I am the executive director and curator at Tefra Institute of Contemporary Art. Gisela Colon's work truly explores the essence of life. Every time you encounter one of the objects, you see something you didn't see before an angle, a form, a window, a perspective. It's a visceral experience that is felt very deeply and in many different ways, dependent upon the viewer's personal interaction. This show is important and emblematic for the organization and our recent rebranding. Tefer ICA leads with curiosity and care, and we really value the power of art to broaden perspectives, start difficult conversations, and consider alternative ideas. Our values are informed by this dimensionality of experience, and all of these elements are really captured within Gisela's practice. Gisela and I went back and forth on the title for a while, and she landed on quantum shift, and it resonated with us both. Quantum references the energy that is present in the universe and things that normally don't follow those physical laws of the universe. Then there's this particular moment in time, this feeling of change, and that's where the word shift comes to the picture. The exhibition sponsor, the science and technology company Lidos, and their participation in the NASA Artemis project, which is placing the first woman on the moon, really created additional synergies in the show. There's a symbolic intersection of art, science, and humanity that is found in Cologne's work with oscillations between feminine and masculine, delicate and strong, liquid and gas, art and science, organic and industrial. Quantum Shift is an exhibition that is very much about a blurring of lines and elimination of constructs.